Hey everybody, welcome back to another Design Spark electrical overview and tutorial video. In the previous video, we covered line diagrams, in particular, creating these two symbols, adding manufacturer part information to them, as well as our cable and adding a cable to our project and connecting and creating our cable assembly. But now we don't really have a lot of other information yet about the pinouts for this cable assembly. So that's where we need to go into our detailed schematic. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that detailed schematic and we notice that my, at the very top, my line diagram tab disappears and my schematic tab appears. And this is because the line diagram has specific features and functions that a schematic doesn't have and vice versa. So if there's a time where you're trying to add a black box to a line diagram, Sorry, you can't add a black box to a line diagram. You have to be within a schematic in order to do that. Um, but if you want to make it look like a black box, you can always create a symbol, um, a schematic symbol that looks like a black box, and then drop that into your schematic, into your line diagram, I should say. So with that said, again, we've created our cable assembly. Let's go ahead and now create the detailed pinout for this. Now, if you remember correctly from our, when we first created the manufacturer part, that connector from a few videos back, uh, we did add circuit and terminal information to that connector that we use, that manufacturer part. So without having to even go into my insert symbol feature for the schematic, I can right click on my component and say insert symbol. And it knows to find that symbol in my library and pull that out and add that as appropriate. And if I take a look at this symbol, we can see that I now have connections. Now, if you also remember from a previous video where I talked about the connection points and how I'd like to have my symbol connection points match my manufacturer part connection points, these green boxes down here is what helps me determine whether or not that connection has been fulfilled and officially made. The reason for that is I can take this off and say, all right, I don't want this terminal to actually connect to terminal eight here. In reality, yes, that's what we want for this instance. But if I my symbol is terminal and my manufacturer parts are listed as digital, an, uh, digital in or analog out, then they're not going to automatically make this connection and they're going to look like this where there's going to be a whole slew of different connections that I would still have to manually come in and override and say, yes, I want this terminal to connect to this one here. So that was this, this is that manual override that I was talking about in that previous video. If everything connects up and I have all green here, green is good. Everything's good to go. That means my connections to my symbol are matching up with my manufacturer part and it looks good. We can continue on our uh, with what we're doing in our design. We can see here that I've got my, my terminals. I also have my tag and my manufacturer reference. Now, if I open up this symbol real quick and I take a look at the information we have, there's a few pieces of information. We have the mnemonic, and we also have the ut uh, utilization of the utility attribute that are turned on. Now, mnemonic comes from the manufacturer part. So again, in the previous video, I talked about um, different information, component information versus manufacturer part information. What is the part being used for versus what the part is? And those attributes these in, these in, uh, these pieces of information here are being pulled from different places. Again, the mnemonic is being pulled from the manufacturer part, and the utility or the utilization is being pulled from the component. And what I mean by that is when I have my part selected here, I would want to come into my symbol, edit terminals, utilization, and now I can add pieces of information, maybe such as five volt DC and common and 12 plus 12 volt DC. And those pieces of information will now be utilized in here because 
not every time. And the reason why they're separated out and they're set to the component level at that utilization level is because when you use this, this connector, not every time you use it is five volt DC always going to be on pin one. Maybe it's on pin seven and eight for the next instance that you use it. So that's why those are set locally on this particular connector rather than at the manufacturer part level. So taking a closer look, we added this schematic symbol. We inserted it from the component itself. But now when we come back over and take a look at our component tree, we see that we have two symbols associated to this part. Um, and if I don't have my line diagram open and I am using a very large sheet, sometimes it's hard to find that other instance of that connector. A nice little feature is I can simply right click on my part and say go to and it will take me to the opposing connector in my project. Now nothing says I have to have just one or in this case two connectors associated to this X1. Maybe I want to break out pins one, two, and three on one spot on my schematic and pins four through eight on another spot on my schematic. I have the ability to assign as many symbols as I want to this X1. And the nice thing with that is that if I need to make a change to the actual information about that part at all, that component or manufacturer part, that will reflect across all the different instances I have in my project. So let's take this a step further. I have my X1. Now let's go ahead and add X2. If I go to insert X2 right now, it's going to give me the exact same symbol. I have the ability to flip that symbol. I can use the space bar and flip it around as necessary to find the appropriate pin. So that way pin one still lines up on the top. And just like that, I now have X2. So now that we have our two connectors and these could potentially be different, I have the ability to come into this one now and I can edit those terminals. And maybe in this case here, this one is plus five volt DC so I can maneuver my my wiring scheme as necessary for all intents and purposes I'm going to just draw straight lines right now until we get into another video where I talk about our actual wire manager when we draw wires we have two ways to draw wires we have multi-wire and when I draw multi-wire we can draw up to in this case this particular wire style has five but I can turn them off and only draw two if I want to. Or I can draw a single wire, in this case, 12 volt DC or 24 or 110, 48. I can go ahead and draw one at a time or use this number of lines and I can draw all eight. I know it says five volts and I selected a 48 volt line, but we can always edit that later. So we can see here, I drew all eight at the same time and I can connect that up. Now, if I don't want to connect it up and maybe I want to show this going somewhere else, I simply can select uh, just left click. And then if I want to change the orientation of how the, the, the wires are being drawn, I can go ahead and change that or I can continue on. As soon as I make, uh, I touch a connection point, the wire ends, I'm still in the wire command. Um, if I want to exit the wire command, either an escape or a right click will do the trick to get out of that command altogether. So now we have our two connectors and we have our wires in between. So now what we want to do is we actually want to take these wires and we're going to turn them into a cable. Because if you remember on our line diagram, we created a cable. So in order to create a cable here, we're going to go ahead and select these now little quick tip if you if you're used to CAD tools in general a left to right drag will include anything inside the box anything right to left will include anything touching that box so I'm going to go ahead and select this and I'm going to associate those cable cores that cable 0011. Now I can find the appropriate. I'm going to go ahead and do this. And I will do 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and associate. And just like that, I've now associated these wires, these conductors to those conductors that are in that particular cable. So I'm really starting to fine tune how my design looks and how uh, the information that I've got in my to from wire report, it's gonna show this particular information between X1 and X2. Now this is only touching the surface on some of the basic schematic capabilities. We're gonna get into a couple more videos where we utilize macros, um, origin destination arrows, again, our functions and locations and what that stuff does as well. Um, but I'm trying to keep these very simple to start and we will get a little bit more advanced as we move throughout this video series um, and these tutorials on Design Spark Electrical. So I hope this helped and I hope it showed how we can connect our line diagram to our schematic and start to generate some very intelligent, very powerful um, features. Uh, pieces of information for our schematics, our projects going forward. So again, thank you for watching. See you next time.